All right then, gang. So Bulma comes with a load of different classes that we can use to construct a nav bar, and there's many different ways that we can use those classes to make them. So if we just go to components and then go to nav bar in the docs and scroll down a bit, we can see an example of one of these nav bars right here. So we can have a brand logo on the left, some links, drop downs, buttons, and you can customize these to look differently. And there's loads of different examples down here on how to do that. If we scroll right down, we can see that we can have different colors of nav bars as well. So what we're gonna do in this lesson is just create a really simple nav bar with our logo on the left. And also on the right, we're gonna have a couple of links. So then if we go back to the code, you can see over here, I've stripped out all of the content again, and we're gonna start this project now by creating this nav. So first of all, we need a nav element, so nav, and I'm gonna give this a class of navbar, which is a Bulma class to style this. And then inside this navbar, we want to add a few different things. Now, before I do any of that, let me just save this and see what this looks like in the browser. So at the minute, we can't really see anything. Nothing's really there. However, if we inspect this, we can see that it does have a particular height at the top. So it is there, it's just that we don't have anything inside it yet. So inside this navbar, what do we want? Well, first of all, we want some kind of brand, a logo. So let's do that. First, we'll do a little comment to say logo hyphen brand like so. And then underneath that, I'm gonna do a div with a class of navbar hyphen brand. Again, all these classes are Bulma classes and they're used to style these particular things that we're adding to the navbar. Now, anytime we add an item into the navbar, we need to do it inside a navbar item class. So I'm gonna do an anchor tag, and it doesn't need to go anywhere because we're only making one page, but you could add an href to it if you wanted it to lead somewhere. And I'm gonna give this a class equal to navbar item. So like I say, any item that we add to the navbar goes in one of these things right here. All right, so inside this, I want to add in an image. Now we don't have any images yet inside our project. So let me create a new folder called assets and I'm gonna dump our logo image inside that. And by the way, all of these images are on the GitHub repo. You just have to select the appropriate lesson, in this case, lesson four, and you're gonna see this assets folder with the image inside it, all right? So once we've done that, we can link to that image. And to do that, I'll use an image tag. And this is gonna have a source of assets forward slash logo.png. We'll just give this an alt of site logo like that. Save that and come over here and we can see that brand over there in the left. Now what I'd like to do is give this a different style. So we're just gonna override the style momentarily of Bulma right here and give this a different max height. And that max height is gonna be 70 pixels because by default, Bulma gives this a smaller max height. So let me save that and preview, and that looks a bit bigger. It's probably a little bit too big, but we are gonna add some padding and margin to this as well, so it kind of shrinks it. So let's say class is equal to, and we'll say py-2, so a strength of two in the y direction, up and down, and then px-2 as well. So left and right, and that looks pretty good to me. Okay, cool. So now we've done that, let's also add some links. So that goes down here after the navbar brand and I'm gonna create a new div and this is gonna have a class of navbar hyphen menu. All right, I'm also gonna give this an ID because we're gonna use this inside JavaScript later on and we'll use the ID to grab hold of this particular element. So I'm gonna call this nav hyphen links, all right? So inside here, I want to create some links and we can create them either at the start of the navigation over here or the end. Now I want them at the end, so I'm gonna do a div with a class of navbar hyphen end, and that places everything that's inside this div at the end of the navbar over here. If you wanted them at the start, you could use navbar hyphen start instead, but I want them at the end. Okay, so now we need a couple of navbar items, so a.navbar hyphen item, the href doesn't need to exist. And the first one is gonna be my account. And then we'll duplicate this. And we'll say this is, oops, shopping cart, and then in brackets zero to say there's no items in the cart. Okay, so we have those two as well over here. 
And now we kind of have this nav bar at the top. Now what I'd like to do as well is put a little shadow underneath the nav bar so that you can tell where it ends. So to do that, we can just come to the nav bar itself and then use a class called has shadow. And this applies a box shadow to an element. So if I save that, then we can see a tiny little shadow at the bottom now. Cool. Now, if we wanted to, we could apply different colors to this nav bar. So for example, if I wanted this to be the primary color, I could say is hyphen primary. Now, I don't use has background primary because that just styles the background of something. When I say is primary, it kind of styles the whole nav bar for us to match the primary theme. You can see the text is white, whereas before it wasn't, okay? Now, I don't want that. I want is white. Now, you might think that this is no different to what we had initially, but it is. If we take this off, oops, if we take it off, then save it. We can see that when we hover over these links, they go blue, right? Now, if I use is hyphen white and save it, then when I hover over these, the links don't go blue. So that's the effect I want. So that's the nav bar for the desktop pretty much done. But notice when the browser width gets smaller, those links on the right are hidden. Now that is the correct behavior. Bulma does this because it knows on smaller screens, there's less space. And normally instead what we have is some kind of mobile drop down menu where we have a burger icon up here. We click on that and it shows the links down below. So that's what we're going to create in the next video.